Hi, welcome back. Today I'm showing you something I'm really excited about. So let's head over to the workbench. So in my latest video I showed you this. And this is a small PVM circuit for dimming LEDs or giving variable speed control to small DC motors. And I built this, as you can see, on a Vero board. And while this works perfectly fine, just for fun, I designed and had manufactured these. So this circuit board is exactly the same as this one. It's a small PVM circuit for dimming LEDs or driving DC motors. It's just a lot nicer. Now unfortunately there is a small mistake in this batch. Because as you can see it says NE556 here. It should really say NE555. I forgot to triple check my work. But the circuit itself should be fine. So let's solder this up. I of course ordered all the components as well for all these circuit boards. So I haven't actually counted the components, but it's not too many. And just to make it as simple as possible, all of them are marked on the card. We have all the values, all the different designations. And my logo. So when soldering circuit boards like this, it's always a good idea to start with the smallest components first, the ones that are closest to the board, because otherwise they are going to be in the way when installing the bigger ones. Now I have done a couple of circuit boards before, but I think this is the most advanced one, actually. And I will be putting these up as, as do-it-yourself kits on eBay. Simply because I don't need like 50 PVM dimmers. So if you're interested, give me a shout out in the comments and I'll send you a link. So let's see, what more do we have? Um, yeah, let's start here. This is a flux dispensing pen. And that's just to help with the... Whoa, that's kind of bad. That's just to help the solder flow a bit better. Let's continue with the, uh, the, I think, the triple five timer. And it's really important to turn this the right way around. As you can see, there's a small dot in the corner. That should correspond to the small dot on the circuit board. You might have to bend in the pins a bit for it to fit. Like that. Now this soldering iron really isn't the best, but it's the only one I have. Or... I do have other ones, but even though this is really quite bad, it's the best one I have. And then we have the capacitors. Now there's two capacitors in this kit. One that's a hundred nanofarad and one that's 10 nanofarad
These pliers are magnetic. There, that's all neat and tidy so far. And let's see now, I think this one is next. Now this is going to be a bit tricky, but I'm going to try to at least get it straight. These big pads takes a lot of heat. Uh, and of course I didn't get straight. Uh, let me just fix that real quick. There, that's better. And we're still looking good. So what's next? There's really not too many components left. We have the MOSFET, the potentiometer, another capacitor, uh, an electrolytic one of 47 microfarads. So let's go with the, mm, the terminal blocks. Yeah, I think they're fine. Now there are a couple of small mistakes I made on this one. Nothing too bad and nothing that will inhibit the function of it. But I do have a version 2.0 that is designed and ready to go. So if these ones sell as I hope they will, I'm gonna make another batch of 50 or so of the, uh, the updated design. Uh, let's see now, let's go with the capacitor. And here is one thing that's really important. Electrolytic capacitors are, uh, what is it called in English? They're polarized, I think. They have a positive and a negative lead. And the long lead here is positive and the short one is negative. You can see the minus sign here. And you also have a corresponding plus sign. You also have a corresponding plus sign on the circuit board. And then we have the, uh, the MOSFET. And as, you can see, and as you can see, this metal part is indicated here as well. So you shouldn't turn it the wrong way around. And now for the final circuit, or sorry, the final component, the potentiometer. And these tabs are to hold it in place while you solder it. And that's all there is to it. So let's let's uh, hook it up and see how it works. So now I'm back. And as you can see, I have the dimmer we just built hooked up to my LED panel since I removed this one. And this is really the moment of truth. I haven't turned it on before now. I really want to capture it the first time on video. So let's uh, see how it goes. Switch on and And it works just fine. I think it's even a bit more sensitive than this model. It might be a lot less capacitance or interference in the traces on the PCB than on all these cables. Anyway, it works perfectly, I'd say. And you can see I've jumpered this input here. I've named this the switch input. I don't know if you can see that. And if you want it running continuously, as long as the power is connected, just jump it as I've done here. Or you can install a smaller switch to turn on and off whatever you're driving from the board. So that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please let me know, leave a comment, subscribe, send me an email, whatever. 
And like I said, I'm going to be putting these ones on eBay. So if you're interested, mention it in the comment and I'll be sure to post a link once they're up there. So till next time.